I'd say really the secret to success, I don't know what, how you measure success, maybe having fun and something you do, is, um, is good advice. So um, the hardest part is finding good advice. The trick is to differentiate between the good and the bad. And then the secret is to keep talking to the people who are giving you out the good stuff. Um, so when I started off, I guess, my father was someone I really respected and arguably a f one of the very few adults I kind of had in my kind of circle to ask advice from. And he said to me when I was at school, I was talking about kind of various things I could do after, after school. And I said, oh, there's this accountancy thing and, you know, they're going to give me a load of money during university and I could go that, but I'm not sure I want to be an accountant. He was like, of course you want to be an accountant. It's a brilliant idea. Go and do that. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, definitely. So I remember going into the interview for this um, big firm that has since kind of gone bust. And uh, I think I was so blasé about the job because I really wasn't interested in They thought, this girl has got balls of steel. We definitely want her. So very sadly, I got the uh, sponsorship scholarship thing. And I spent a miserable nine months of my gap year doing it. Um, and I think um, that really taught me very early on is you've really got to make sure that you're listening to good advice. My father was arguably not the best person to advise me. I worked out afterwards. So I think finding good advice in life is kind of crucial. Find out where you can get the good stuff, meet lots of bright people, engage with people. Um, and that's a really good point, I think. The trick to differentiate the good and the bad, I think, is about research. So when I go to a new place, a new country, on holidays or travels, the one thing I want to do is eat exciting food. So what I do is I ask a lot of people on Twitter and I find a kind of common denomination of places that people think are good. And then I go on the internet and I look at what those places, what people have said about them, and then I decide where I'm going to go and eat. And my husband thinks I spend a little bit too much time on it. He thinks it's a bit dull how much time I focus on where I'm going to eat my food. But it does mean that I get to eat some really good places. So I think what I failed to do in those early years when I spent nine months being miserable as a VAT consultant um, was I'd failed to do research not only on who was giving me advice and I think the passion thing is what we've heard from our other two speakers you've got to do something you're, you're, you're in love with and I remember a boyfriend at the time whilst I was in the midst of this rather horrific kind of time as a VAT consultant which I'm sure would suit other people very well but not personally me was he said you've got to follow your dreams you've got to do something you're passionate about um, so that was the trick. He was giving out the good advice at the time. My father was giving out the not so good advice, basically hedged on what he believed. And I think that's another knack. When you're talking to people about advice, they've always got a, a, a kind of sense of opinion. They're coming at it from a particular bias. So you've got to be aware about that. So the secret is to keep talking to people, give out the good stuff. In other words, it's really a mentor. So I found a few mentors by accident, and they really did sh shape me in those early years. And arguably, they become less useful, as your peers maybe become more useful. Um, but my first brilliant mentor, I met on a catwalk show, bizarrely. Um, she was one of the two fat ladies, Clarissa Dixon Wright. Uh, and I met her when I was about 26. And by this stage, I think I'd spent a tiny bit of time being a financial journalist for the Money Week. Uh, I'd been my VAT consultant. I got sacked, by the way, just before the end of the nine months. Um, I did a few stints in a few banks, I think I did advertising, I did some marketing, I did some internet strategy. At the height of the dot-com boom, I was in a very cool advertising agency in Soho, in the middle of the internet strategy department. I was so bored. I thought, what is wrong with me? So what I failed to take into account was my real passion. And when I met Clarissa Dixon Wright um, backstage, I said to her, she was a cook, I was fanatical about cooking. Obviously, you know, the idea of cooking was just not open to me. I had to do business or something. And she said, well, what do you really love in life? And I said, well, I love cooking. She was like, well, why aren't you cooking then? And she sent me off to cookery school. And that was a total epiphany for me. Um, I stayed out afterwards. I learned how to make cheese. I became a little entrepreneur. I had a bread stand. I used to make sourdough breads every night and then sell it in the markets in the daytime. And I had an amazing time. I finally found something that I was interested in doing. So finding that passion is so important. My second really amazing mentor was Prue Leith because um, after I came back to London, after Ireland, the cookery school, I worked in a food shop for a while, learning a bit about food, uh, ruling out stuff, wasn't very good at managing a shop, quite interested in marketing, loved brands. I set up a market stall for them. I love that kind of hand, you know, meeting people, being able to talk to customers. Um, I love building their website. That was really fun. I love writing their newsletter. 
so I, you know, bit by bit, started working out what I wanted to do. Um, I decided to do a book for charity, which was quite fun because I met this crazy girl. We came up with a crazy idea, so we did a soup book, which we um, sold for charity. Um, we got lots of celebrity chefs to give us recipes, and I went back to Mexico because I'd been to Mexico when I was 18, and I loved the food. And I remember coming back going, wow, Mexican food is amazing. It's not anything like we have here. And everyone going to me, what, Tex-Mex? It's disgusting. And I was like, no, 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 it's really good. And they're like, no, 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 it's not. Um, so about 10 years later, I thought I must go back and see whether, um, whether that food really was that good or whether I should just believe whatever the people say. Um, so I went back and I lived in Mexico. Um, and when I came back from Mexico, I was very broke by this stage. I think I was 28, 29, never really made any money. Lots of my friends had, as feeling slightly depressed about where my life was going. Um, and in fact, I then talked to my second really important mentor, it was a woman called Prue Leith. She said, learn on someone else's time. So I hadn't really done that in my field. I hadn't done enough learning. And um, at about that stage, in fact, I met my business partner. Um, and uh, I said to him, I love Mexican food. And he said, I went to Mexico too. I think it's quite good. And I said, look, come out with me, because I used to live there, spent a year living there. There's really, really exciting stuff. Um, so we went back out there for 10 days, um, and we came back, and we decided we we're going to open a Mexican restaurant. And um, a lot of people said, you're mad. And I think this is where Luke's advice comes in, is that sometimes you've really got to just follow your heart and do something you believe in. If I'd had any idea how much work it would be, I mean, that's the beauty of hindsight, or maybe the bad thing about hindsight, you don't really want hindsight, because, yeah, you just, you just, it is a bit insane. I think doing MasterChef was a good preparation for the ut utter terror I had of opening our first restaurant in Covent Garden. Uh, we had 140 seats. My only kind of restaurant experience prior to that had been working for six months in a lovely restaurant called Peacham Nurseries. I had no idea how to run a kitchen. And um, we were ordering kind of two boxes a day, and then we realised we had to do three boxes. And then I remember when I put up the order one night, I thought, ha, I'm not going to do five boxes, I'm going to go for eight. And, uh, and the next day at four o'clock, I said, someone get me the guacamole. And one of the chefs came and said, we've run out. And I was like, don't be so ridiculous, go back and look. Men, you know, can't look for anything. And uh, we had actually run out of guacamole again. Now we have 21 boxes of avocados going in that restaurant every day. So we started off with 21 people in that one site. We now um, have 600 people working for us. So kind of to sum up, I was asked for a few pearls of wisdom. Um, and I think um, looking at how I got through this all and what I've learned, um, I think surrounding yourself with good people is absolutely crucial because you're only ever a tiny part, a tiny, tiny spoke in the wheel. Um, I'm one of 600 people at Oaxaca and, um, and will always be one of many. Um, but f but I, I'm big on partners too, like Luke. I really believe in partners because I've got many failings and my business partner now complements most of them. Um, mistakes are absolutely crucial. I make them all the time. They're absolutely crucial for learning. And I think we're getting at better at that entre entrepreneurial spirit here where, where people aren't so afraid of making mistakes. Um, definitely with the internet, um, it's easier to set up a business, e easier to shout about it, less startup costs. Um, mistakes are good. In America, they embrace them. I think we should too. Um, and then lastly, you're going to work like, like a dog. I mean, you do anyway. If you're working for someone else, if you work for yourself, you're going to be working hard. Um, so, but just have a passion, whether it's banking, um, whether it's Bollywood dancing, whether it's anything, just um, you know, have a passion for what you're doing and you will carry along people behind you. So um, that's that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.